Hi, my name's Nick Jeffries of New Projects and you're watching New Weekly, episode 14. You need these professionals to bring together your design and your concepts. Once you agree what you want to build and how you want the, the scheme to look, the architect will submit it for you. Nice house, nice lady. She's got a basement um, under the front part of the house, but she wants to carry it back under the garden. Two minutes away from my office. Most properties have done loft conversions, pod rooms, kitchen extensions, basements. So you're gonna make at least five to 600K profit margin on this project if you do the basement, loft conversion and full refurb. So I'm just gonna show you inside our new office, which is next door to 10 to 12 Fulham High Street. So first visit of today, I'm outside a big block of apartments in Fulham, which backs onto the Thames. And um, I'm meeting a couple here, I think they've just bought the apartment and they want a complete remodel and fit out. So let's go in and take a look. No, oh, very big room. And, um, Nice little terrace. Yeah, that's been um, dismantled at the moment. Yeah, they're uh, sorting out problems with the um, all the the were until about a week ago. Big big bushes in here. Yeah, huge great trees and shrubbery. Yeah, but they were leaking. So every flat has been ordered to have the planters removed, and they're sorting that out. They're they're sorting it all out. Um, like chip chip or something. Yeah, so soil it, soil it. These, so. They want to improve well, the drainage and line them. It's in such a prime location, this block. Mm. Once it has been sort of all Sorted. the management gets to grip with tarting up a little bit on the outside. Yeah. And you know the values are just gonna go boom. Yeah, I hope so. So the the balcony like all the slabs have been taken up and whatever, but that would look nice. So the, How many square feet is the apartment now? I think it's about twelve hundred. About twelve hundred. I think. And you, you want to, because this is a lovely space, isn't it? You're, you're going to keep all this open plan still exactly well, the same? I think so. I'm subject to advice, one option that other people do. I think the only wall you can take out is this one. Yeah. If you want, if you want to. Um... Do you know what? It all depends what you want. Yeah. You know, what, what do, you, do you want to go for the sort of the wow factor? Do you want to increase the value of the property? Probably value. Yeah. Probably, probably just value. Personally, I, I probably wouldn't take this out because then you'd have to redo the kitchen again, wouldn't you? Because the kitchen would now be out of kilter with the rest of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> it look like a missing tooth. You wouldn't have to, to no. If, if you just took this out, mm. obviously you're going to have to get freeholders' consent, yeah. the management company. Yeah. But I just think it may. I think I need that anyway, actually. I think in the lease it says if you're doing any significant work, to yeah. including, including... Because you won't, just by taking this wall out, it's not going to affect the kitchen units or anything like that. Okay. You're going to want to replace the flooring anyway. Yeah. Um, but I think definitely, let's have a, a think about opening this up. Yeah. Even if it had crittle doors or something, some sort of glazing pocket door so you can you can open up that way and open it up this way so when you're cooking you can close it up mm. and when you want to uh, entertain you can pull the, the doors open yeah, the, that the, may be really yeah, nice yeah, I think people have obviously thought as you spend a bit of time in the kitchen cooking and stuff and you lose the view of the river yeah because you're sort of 
hidden away, but some people like their kitchen yeah. to be hidden away to keep all the dirty dishes and smells. And yeah. Yeah. But uh, these days, a, a kitchen is you know the main entertaining space, yeah. isn't it? You're gonna have yeah. it. You, I think opening it right up, but maybe having a glass partition where you can open it up would be amazing. Yeah. So um, yeah, in essence, the main thing to be done, I think, is certainly the floor. But the, these these um yeah. these flats have carpets in them and. Living by the river, you get tons of moths, so the, the carpets just become moth-eaten. Really? Yeah. What about um, the heating source? Is it is it a main coming from the main building, or have you got an independent a boiler? Boiler, yeah. Right. Okay. Would you like you know? Um, Would you do built in? Built in with yeah. lovely joinery, that, yes. like LED lighting. You know, we've done like a feature wall. Yep. where you can have maybe your TV on the wall and maybe a bi-ethanol fire underneath. So in the winter, oh, yeah, you could yeah, have yeah. a nice little romantic, you know, bit of uh, heat, heat. Not expensive, mm. but it looks amazing. Okay. And at least you don't have to have all your things on show. Yeah, it will all be out. Getting that camera. You, you know, the, the sound bar can be put into the wall. So it's all yeah. slick. Obviously the lighting, it, what is this? Concrete. Yeah. So potentially, Every, everything's concrete which makes it what we do we drop the ceiling by about 70 80 mil all mm -hmm. right because what we want you, you probably want some nice spotlights in there to make mm -hmm. it look a bit more contemporary and modern yeah these lights are screwed yeah exactly so we're gonna have to drop the ceiling a bit because you can't put the put them in the ceiling yeah if you're gonna have um blinds or either Roman blinds or a, like a more uh, yeah obviously yeah so because if, if we were to drop the stuff, ceiling yeah. There could be a detail around here where the, maybe the, the track is electric, sunk into. right? And it's sunken in, so it's hidden. Yeah, it so it'll be, all be on your phone or an app. You go, and it'll pull the curtains for it. Again, it's sort of home automation. It doesn't have to be too much. And um, it's just a bit more detail yeah. with the plastering around the outside. So this development is right next to Fulham Football Club and I think it's called Craven Cottage and um, I've been there a few times to Fulham FC but here it is here look and I know they've got some massive new regeneration going on the other side have a look So here's four reasons why you should choose a design and build construction company. I get asked all the time, why should you go with a design and build company? Well, the reason being is because you can take care of every single thing under one roof. You don't have to go with any other professionals. It's just one company has got the responsibility to deliver your project. Whether it be number one, architecture. So when you first come to a design and build company, you may not have planning approval. So you may need a professional architect to talk you through 
a scheme for a kitchen extension, a loft conversion, a mansard, a basement. Well, you need these professionals to bring together your design and your concepts. Once you agree what you want to build and how you want the, the scheme to look, the architect will submit it for you. So once it's submitted, that's done and dusted. Then you can sit down with number two, the interior designer. So the interior designer will help you decide what the overall look of the property is going to look like. What flooring, what skirting, what handles, what lights, what kitchens, what bathroom, what sanitary wear. There's thousands of items you need to choose before you get to any construction stage. And the interior designer and the architects, because they're on the same team, they will collaborate together and create the scope of works. Then, number three, the project management team. You need the project management team to bring it all together. There's a thing called CDM 2015, principal designer, these principal designers are there to protect you, the client, and the contractor for health and safety. So project management brings it all together. They liaise with all the subcontractors, the architects, the interior designers, any third party, structural engineers, building control, any surveys, have all the conditions been signed off, has there been an asbestos survey? Thousands of little things project managers do. And then number four, the construction. Our teams of trusted subcontractors know how to deliver a project to a five star level. So there are the four options you get when you sign up with a design and build company like New Projects of Fulham. So if you've got a project you would like New to look at, why don't you give me a call? 020-773-1-6841. So I'm just on the way to my first viewing of the day in Parsons Green, Fulham. This one should have been my third viewing, but the first one I couldn't get to that was at 10 o'clock uh, because the A3 was completely blocked and I didn't manage to get to London till half past 10. So Will had to take that one on his own, but apparently it went very, very well. And that was Montpellier Street in uh, Knightsbridge, four story uh, terraced house. It's already had a basement needs a mansard needs a full refurb and it's ready to go so fingers crossed on that one and the second one would you believe it? i turned up and the lady postponed it already till next week she literally left a message with jemima a couple of days ago but the message didn't get back to me so she's a naughty girl but the lady seemed lovely i couldn't go in there today because her daughter has got covid so we've uh, booked it for next Tuesday, same time. So let's go and have a look at this beautiful house, which is in, um, well, one of the lion houses. So I'll take some vids so you can have a little look. So what do you think? Nice house, nice lady. She's got a basement um, under the front part of the house, but she wants to carry it back under the garden. So I will make arrangements for Will to go and see her sometime next week. 
maybe we need a pre-app first because she does want to take the basement quite a long way into the garden the existing basement she wants to drop it by one meter so uh it's a nice nice area beautiful house um but let's see right now we are heading back to the office take a walk through Bishop's Park and show you the different types of extensions people have done in Fulham. So this one's a good example. So as you can see, they've done a double side return, a kitchen extension and a loft conversion. This property now is probably four and a half thousand square feet, including, I guarantee you, they've done a basement. So let's go and have a look. So it's had a complete refurb, all the brickwork's been repointed. And yes, look, there you go. I've got a basement under the footprint so this house originally was I'm guessing 2,000 square feet so after the refurb and the mansard and the side returns and the kitchen extension that's gone up by about 2,000 square feet Same over here. They've done a kitchen extension, mansard. I can see they haven't done a basement. But at some point, that will have a basement. Again, this one here. Side return. Loft conversion. Pod room. This has probably done over the last three or four years. Let's see if they've done a basement as well. There you go. Basement light well there, basement light well there. So again, this one up here, that's called a pod room. You've got the side return here under the kitchen. That's the kitchen by folding doors. In the distance there, someone's having a loft conversion. You've got the scaffolding with the, with the tin roof and netting. People spend a lot of money on the appearance of their house. But all the brickwork's been repointed, all new windows, shutters, pristine. Let's see if they got the basement. And again, light well, light well, this one's got a basement. So as you can see, this is just a normal road in Fulham, two minutes away from my office. 
most properties have done loft conversions, pod rooms, kitchen extensions, basements, because they know that is the only way to increase the value to their property. So in Fulham, every pound per square foot you're gonna create is gonna add at least 1,000 pounds to the resale value of the property. So if we're creating a thousand square foot basement, that's gonna add one million pounds to the resale value. If you're gonna add a 400 square foot mansard loft conversion, that's gonna add 400K to the resale value. Kitchen side return, maybe 300 square feet. So that's gonna add 300K to the resale value. So you can see, extensions add value to your property if you're thinking about getting an extension get in contact with me and we'll come around to take a look anytime Right, so I'm back in the office and I thought I'd jump on the computer, right move to see what's on the market, modernized and unmodernized. So I found one property in Fulham. The asking price is three million quid. Let's jump into the images to have a quick look around. So to me, great property. Um, I like all the outside lighting, like the, the, um, the curb appeal. This is the ground floor. So look at the contemporary stairs, you know, lovely marble flooring, uh, kitchen opening up into bifold doors. Down the bottom here, as you can spot, is the walk on glass. So that tells me there is definitely a basement below. Let's have a look. Yeah, and here we are, here's the basement. Looks like it's kind of a cinema room. You've got the, the screen here. Uh, I love the coffered lighting, very high ceilings, looks like it's a three meter ceiling height. Um, I really like this, lots of LED lighting, speakers built into the walls, beautiful carpet as well. This looks like one of the, um, could be a master bedroom, but it seems like they've got, they've got open plan stairs throughout the whole property. So it's not really child friendly because they're quite, or pet friendly. This is the ensuite. Um, beautiful house, beautiful bit of walk-in wardrobe, love the tiles, little gym, there's the kitchen again. So let's just jump back in to the floor plan. So the square footage is 2,881 square feet. So this property has had the kitchen extension, so we can see here you know, where the alley used to be, that's now gone. So they've had the kitchen extension, which open up the bifolding doors into the garden. They've had the basement. So you go down here into the basement and, um, oh, here's the basement, here's the basement. Yeah, here's the basement, yeah. Lower ground floor. Uh, so straight into the, um, the hallway, you've got like a utility room, a downstairs loo and a big, bedroom you know it's it's 21 foot by 11 foot so that's a massive bedroom with Juliet balcony doors into the front light well which gets fresh air down there and a massive it, they call it a reception room too but this is more like a cinema room and then you've got the walk-on glass here so that basement I reckon that basement is roughly 1,000 square feet so that this basement has probably cost them 400k to build and this is going to add one million pound to the resale value so that's that's the basement alone added one million quid they've got the side return which they're gonna add maybe 300 square feet 
that's 1,300 to the, to the gross square footage. And then what we got? We got a loft conversion. I think this one already had a loft conversion, but it's got the pod room. So the pod room, which is the room that goes out the back, that's probably 200 square feet. So in total, this developer, whoever's done this, has added 1,500 square feet to this project. So they're after 3 million quid. So I think they've definitely spent on this project 1 million in total, maybe a bit more because of the staircase and the flooring is extra, maybe 1.2. So it's a lovely property. This is on the market today for three million pounds. So I like that one. Let's have a look at what else is on uh, right move. See, let's see something which is unmodernized, shall we? So, right. This one is in Chesilton Road in Fulham. Looks kind of unmodernized. They're asking two thousand, two million nine hundred ninety uh, thousand. Um, let's just tap into this. Well, as you see, it's already had the mansard. Someone's done the mansard. The someone's already done the basement. So this property is three thousand two hundred and sixty-seven. 3,267 3, square feet. Um, again, it's quite weird. So the lower ground floor, they haven't done a full basement. It's like a three quarter basement because it ends here. There's the footprint here. So they haven't gone into the garden because otherwise it would be here. No walk on glass, no light well, except for the front. So it's a little bit of a weird layout to be fair. Um, and if you have a look at the pictures, I think it was done about 10, 12 years ago. So it doesn't look, I think they've, um, yeah, it's a little bit dated still. Let's just go back to the floor plan. So reception, open plan reception, into the kitchen, diner, small sort of doors going into the garden, the upper floor. So that usually on the, 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 the master bedroom here, this usually gets opened up, that gets blocked up, and this is the master with walk-in wardrobes and an ensuite here. That's the usual standard layout on a Fulham house because when you add ensuites and ward walk-in wardrobes, it's more of an, uh, you know, the, these are the luxuries that the modern family likes. And you've got a little bathroom on this sort of landing here. Um, up to the second floor. Again, small study, no en suites at all. So you've just got lots of little bedrooms. No wonder this is on the market and it hasn't really sold. So it's three million quid. So they're asking just over a thousand pound a square foot because of the, the square footage size. And in the, uh, the loft conversion, kind of, again, mansard, You've got a little on suite there, but looks a bit unmodernized. The nice thing they've got, they've got here, they've got the roof terrace. So they've got a roof terrace coming out on the, uh, the loft conversion. Again, let's try and find something which is unmodernized. All right, Harwood Terrace, no. No, 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 these are all being modernized. Chesilton Road 2.5. Right, here we go. So here's another one in Chesilton Road, Fulham. Exactly the same house than the one we've just seen. But this one is kind of unmodernized. As you see, we've got the plans here. We've got the ground floor. It has had the kitchen extension. So it's had the little, uh, very dated kitchen extension. You can see in these photos here, it's just a dated kitchen extension. But 
it hasn't had the basement done. So the existing basement here is 156 square foot. If this basement was under the whole footprint of the house, it would be roughly, again, 900 to 1,000 square feet, adding one million pounds to resale value. Uh, on this one, I don't think the loft conversion has been done because I think you've got ground, let's have a look. So you've got ground, first, second, and then there's no loft conversion. So if we have a look here, so we've got ground, first, second, with no mansard. In fact, we did the one two doors up from here about five years ago. So this is this is kind of unmodernized, even though it's had a side return. It's quite a dated side return. So this needs to be replaced with something called contemporary modern and take away all these um, columns so it opens it right up. Um, yeah, so that this one is quite a good opportunity actually. So 2.5 million. Let's say you buy for 2.5 million, you're going to add, you're going to add 1,000, say 400 to the square footage. So let's have a little calculation. So we, so we've got 2,356 plus 1,400 square feet for basement and loft equals 3,756 square feet. So if we do, and it's say, let's say we refurb the whole property, make it really cool contemporary. In this road, resale values are, for something finished and nice, 1,100 a square foot. So if we go 3,756 times 1,100 equals 4.1 mil. Let's say worst case scenario, 3.9, 3.9. So you're gonna buy it for 2.5. The build is gonna be 700. So you're gonna make at least after fees, you're gonna make at least five to 600K profit margin on this project if you do the basement, loft conversion, and full refurb. So this one stacks up even for a developer. An end user, they would love this property, but obviously it's a quite a big uh, construction project to get your head around. So that's three opportunities. We found two which have been completely remodeled, adding the basement, loft, side, and pods, and one unmodernized in Chesterton Road, which needs the basement, loft, and full refurb. So that is how a developer find opportunities. Um, so yeah, interesting. Hi guys, how are you? I'm good, okay. how are you? How's the calling? I saw you like this. I'm like, oh, there's two. He's a stalker, isn't he? Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. You're going to do that to me, I'm going to do that to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stronger. But your phone's bigger than mine. I'll be good. So how's the calling, Izzy? Yeah, good. Okay? Yeah, we've yeah. had quite a few positives today. Yeah. Uh, this, yesterday was a really good day as well, Ooh. actually. Um, I've just booked in a virtual meeting with Nick with a architect for the next week. Um, and we're just waiting for mm. someone to come through, really. It's a slow process because it's still new, so early on in the new year. Do you have a list what you have to call us, call them? Yeah. Uh, all of my call logs. The yeah. other thing that I have, who I have called through. Wow. Um, and the greens are all my positives. Um, and I'm now mm. just going back, because I've actually got to the end of my Excel spreadsheet now. Mm -hmm. So I've gone through over 2,000 architects. So I'm now going back on the ones that I did highlight positive and mm -hmm. going back through again. Oh, well done. Yeah. Very good. Jamaima, how is the TikTok? Yeah, good. I'm Any so new plans? Um, I'm just calling you to send me the password to Canva. 
Yeah. So I can have a play around in that and see what I can do. Are you using Canva? Canva, yeah. Okay. Lots of, have you ever used Canva before? Uh, for me, it's a little bit unprofessional. I don't know. I use Photoshop. No, I don't know. Canva is just like, I don't know. It's just. Yeah, but Cam Canva is good for templates. And if, and if you're going to do, if you. Um, for yeah, but good for the yeah, they did, for they did. Hmm, I don't know. It, it, it just I have, already have um, with the Illustrator and already play around with the Photoshop. You know, I I would throw it throughout camera for sure. But but, but yeah, it's for for some people you know, for the startup, then then camera is is just a perfect choice well, because of the Canva template for uh, YouTube Shorts. Or doing the cutting. You know yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's still a startup because I wouldn't use, you know, a camera yeah. for for videos either. So I would use some more higher professional. But because because my yeah, level is my right? level is my level is different. Yeah, that's why. Mm, which means but your level is higher. Because than no, level. because you know I'm I'm doing no because the, you know come by this <laughs> kind of template. No, it's not that. It's, everybody, you have to start off somewhere. So Combo does not have all those options what you have on the Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro or even After Effects. So if you do some stuff, even you can get templates on After Effects, you know, but but yeah, it's just something you quickly want to execute, quickly do it and might you don't have that knowledge, you know, what if Premiere Pro can do, you know, or a lot of Final Cuts, then obviously it could come so, as a so good choice to do. Let's say if you, on those Instagram notes, on those, uh, YouTube shorts, 16 seconds. Yeah. So if you created a text template to go over a 16 second Instagram show, uh, YouTube short, yeah. could you do that quite quickly? So when you send them to me, you've already got some, some you yeah. know, when, so when I'm speaking, it, it's, yeah. uh, it's coming up. And yeah. in a nice text and it's flipping around. And yeah, so that's, that's what I'm saying. So, so all these engines has it, you know, but by just a different way. So if you're experiencing uh, Photoshop or experiencing our video editing, then then obviously I, I would not choose the camera, but but you can use camera as well. I I think it's the quality is not the same, or well, or how they build the engine. So at the moment I'm editing um, TikToks. Um, what are you doing? Is that on on camera? Um, TikTok. show you inside our new office which is next door to 10 to 12 Fulham High Street so as you see it needs a load of work we think we're going to use it as extra space for our design team architects and interior designers maybe some project management as well so we've got the mezzanine floor up here. It absolutely reeks of, well, I don't know what, but we had a major problem with rats in here over the last three years. It's been locked up for six years and um, we're gonna get around to remodeling it, making it look amazing to match up like next door. 
I'm not gonna open that door yet because uh, just in case the old vermin is still down there because as all the water is turned off, they can come up through the, the loo into the building. So we won't actually go through there at the moment. Um, we've got a few bits for welfare, the kettle. We've got a couple of microwaves, a couple of chairs and a table. So it's Friday morning, it's freezing cold, there's blue skies and I thought I'm just going to jump in the car and I'm going to go and show you a few projects just for the drive-by what we've done over the past three to four years. Uh, the first stop would be Cheserton Road in Fulham where we've done three projects. Let's go and have a look. So I'm in Cheserton Road now, and this project here, which is just coming to the final stages, we quoted for this one about three years ago. And basically they wanted to demo the existing 1960s brick language school to build three or five terrace houses to match up with the rest of the street but unfortunately we didn't win it so let's walk up Cheserton Road and I'll show you a few projects new have completed over the last well three three or four years so it was completely unmodernized we built a basement under the footprint we did a large kitchen extension side return and a mansard on top with a complete strip out and refurbishment and I think this one uh, started off at 2,000 square feet and then it went up to 3,500 square feet that's number 13 Cheselton Road as you see if you look along most people have done mansards that one hasn't these ones have this is the first ever basement project we did so we did uh, got planning for a thousand square foot basement mansard and full refurb did that one probably five years ago hello mate you all right not bad how are you all good what are you doing the basement there uh full renovation nice there is a basement that's gone in there yeah is it your project uh, it was started by a previous contractor who did a runner. So, so what, you doing, doing a kitchen extension? Yeah, there's been an extension on the back. That was all done previously. Yeah. So we're just finishing up, yeah. found a couple of issues. We're, yeah. um, we're contractors as well. Okay. I'm just doing a little video because I've done five projects up this road. Yeah. All on this, I've done nothing on this side. All right. <laughs> I've done number 13, 35, 69, 65. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, I hope it all goes well, mate. It's nice to see you protected with the windows in there. Yeah. Well, have a great day, mate. You too, mate. Thank you. Bye bye. We also did this one here ground floor flat. We did a basement under the footprint and also the one next door, number 55. And the last one we did was 69. So 69 basement, mansard full refurb this morning I was meant to go and have a new screen put in the Tesla because there's a massive crack but it's the second time I've been to Autoglass and guess what I've turned up 8 a.m. and they said they haven't got the glass in stock I said how can that be I had a phone call to say come on in the glass is here and we'll book you in. But no, I'm very disappointed in Autoglass. You can't keep canceling. You know, people are busy, people have got things to do, and uh, yeah. I'll tell you a story about this project down here I'll put some images on the screen but this 
was the last one I did with my ex-business partner. We got planning to build four new build houses with basements, but during the process, unfortunately, our relationship came to a grinding halt and we parted ways. But I will put something up here so you can see what it looks like. It's a little bit crazy You're suddenly blurry now I wonder if anything was real So it's a fantastic development and um, I think there's two of them on the market still. But yeah, move on. All right, so these are our new cards. All beautiful black gold leaf embossed. But guess what? My old mate, William, has changed his bloody mobile number at a cost of 750 quid the whole lot. There you go. They look at, well mine look right anyway, look, there you go. So that's another episode coming to the end. It has been a surprisingly very busy week with new inquiries. I'm telling you, just today I've had four. And just before we started filming, that was another one there. A lady's phoned up out the blue. First of all, I thought she was pitching me because I couldn't really hear her properly. She was talking about labour and trades. Then all of a sudden is, do you want to go on our tender list for this eight million pound project? I said, yes, please, let's do it. So she's sending that through later on. Um, we've also had a call out the blue from a developer who's got 60 units, 60 units in Bracknell. Uh, he's already told me what the budget is. S no, what did he say? Eight million pounds for 60 units. And he said, if we can make it stack up, uh, as long as he gets his 30% return of investment and that brings the, his investors into play, uh, the deal's on. So two big deals. We've had a viewing late last night in Cloncurry Street, uh, Fulham. A guy's phoned up. He's already exchanged, he's gonna complete soon. He wants a basement, side return, pod room, full refurb, lovely. So as I said, it's been a really productive, but stressful week. I've been pulled from pillar to post, but it's finished. So let's uh, have a great weekend, but don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It really helps, like, share. Thanks very much, and we we'll see you all next week. Cheers.